Today on Encore, a prolific and acclaimed author. With more than 100 books to her name, 84-year-old Joyce Carol Oates has dissected American society throughout her 60-year career, winning countless prizes. She sat down with France 24's Fatimata One in Italy at Sicily's Taumina Book Festival, where she was honored with the prestigious Tau Book Prize. Joyce Carl Oates, thank you for being here with us and welcome to Friends 24. Thank you. Tell us how do you feel receiving the Tau Book Prize here in Italy, uh, the prize that not only honors your artistic value but also your moral value? Oh, it's, it's a great honor. It's, it, it brings me deep into, inside myself for introspection to contemplate the ways in which I begin as a, a very young writer with great doubt and insecurity to find myself uh, with readers that I would never have anticipated. It's a really great honor, extraordinary. More generally speaking, um, what do you think of awards? I mean, you have almost won every prize except the Nobel. Uh, will it be a major achievement receiving it? Well, receiving awards is encouraging when one is, I think, beginning especially. I, I think there's a point at which awards can become dazzling so that the writer, who should be an observer, very quiet in the background, the writer has to, to stay anonymous. Important to all artists should be quiet and effacing. Whereas receiving awards is like dazzling, it's like too much attention, which is uh, a negative thing, I think, ultimately. So it is often say that you're more than a writer, um, that you are a full-fledged psychologist uh, with a profound knowledge of Americans. Um, how would you describe the state of the United States now, like more divided than ever? At the present time, the United States is, I think, tragically divided. I was actually anticipating this. I was writing about this 20 years ago. You can see a kind of rift between a way of being that's very fundamentalist and rural and kind of populist, and another way that's more uh, highly educated, uh, comfortable with technology, and secular. So the two Americas are going in different directions. I can't foresee the future. I don't know what will happen. But are you optimistic? I'm optimistic, but based on the past, I think we have to be realistic, too. There's the rural way of life, and then there's the kind of urban. Our urban centers are highly developed and very ethnically diverse. Our rural areas tend to be homogenous, uh, white, and older populations. So there are really two populations. Ultimately, the urban, urban areas with the diverse populations will increase and continue. So that will be America in the future, but not immediate future. So like the next few years or so, I think there'll be a good deal of dissension. So let's talk about the last book, Babysitter. Uh, you address issues of sexism, racism, which resonate very much with today, um, although it's set in the 70s. Was it a way to say that not much or nothing has changed in 50 years? I lived in Detroit in the area of that, of the novel in, in 1977. 1960, 1976, 1977. So I wanted to memorialize that, that era where there was a serial killer and all the sense of, of trauma and anxiety and stress and fear in the air. So I made the novel in the historical present, so it's happening now like a movie. At the same time, the, sec the sexual predator at the center of the novel has resonance with a person like Harvey Weinstein, who is right, you know, very contemporary. So I wanted to explore the network of enablers 
and people who, who protect and make possible the predator, it seemed that all the predators were isolated and all by themselves. But now when we look at somebody like Harvey Weinstein and Epstein and others, we see that they have this an, a big web of people helping them. That seemed to be like a new, a new insight. So I wanted to write sure. about that. So once again, you have taken a true crime as a starting point. We remember Zombie in the 1995. Uh, it's a chilling novel inspired by the life of um, Jeffrey Dahmer. Uh, the other novel, Black Water, inspired by the accident involving Ted Kennedy. Babysitter, as you just mentioned, was a serial killer um, in the 70s who targeted children. How do you choose the story you want to tell? I started writing that story 20, or 20 years ago, I wanted to write about the feelings in the air and the anticipation, apprehension, uh, opening the newspaper. And we didn't have social media. At the time. You know, looking at the newspaper headline about the, the, ki the killer and how my friends who were mothers, who had children that age, they were very, very frightened. So in writing the novel, I'm writing about something I experienced. So usually, though, in your um, novel, you feature strong and complex female characters. I remember Loretta uh, in your fourth novel, Them, yeah. an African-American woman, working class, resilient, determined, very protective of her family and living in Detroit. But in this book, also taking place in Detroit, Anna is a rich white man's wife. She's weak, shallow, Nini, and <laughs> ever in, in all through the, the, the story, she has the choice. She never takes a good option. Uh, what was your intention creating her? Was it like to make a double of Loretta? Is Hannah a double of Loretta? It's an interesting question. I think that with, with Hannah, I wanted a character who was almost vo without volition. She was someone to think whom things happen. She's a mother. She's a wife. She becomes the lover of a man. She also is the daughter of a father. So she doesn't have any identity. And she's sort of searching for some identity. She may have had a turning point in, in her life where she may not live. She may have to die. She may be a sacrifice. But this character, obviously, is not feminist. She believes that if a woman is not desire, uh, a woman does not exist. Well, she thinks that in the beginning of the novel, but near the end, at the end of the novel, she repudiates her lover. I mean, he's taking her little son into a men's room with the little boy's hand, and she comes and takes her son back. So I don't think she feels the same way near the end of the novel. I have a theory about you and violence. You know, we often say that you are fascinated by violence. But I would say that you might like uh, violence, stage violent, with rules. You wrote on boxing. Rather than unjustified violence human, you know, inflict to their peers or children, what do you think? Well, we're, we're in a world so saturated with violence. It's like you hold a mirror up to the world. It's very chaotic. We have, uh, we have mass shooters in the United States. This can happen any time. But with a novel or a, or a movie, you're kind of limiting. So you're very, a very small frame. And so like one thing happens, but then consequences. One, two, three. So it's like a story that evolves. Life in the United States is very chaotic. But most, most writers are trying to make sense of the chaos. Your books, you know, we have talked about it, um, take place usually in dark, gloomy environment. Could you, such a beautiful place like Italy, Taormina, could inspire you? Oh, well, I, I usually write about places that I know, and very often the landscapes or the cityscapes are part of the story. Whereas the Detroit that I'm writing about actually is, is not dark and gloomy. Yeah, sure. It's very affluent. There's a different kind of beauty there's architectural beauty and, and affluence. But in Italy and in Sicily and here, there is great historical significance. So going back in time and 
being suffused with a sense of time is not typical of America. It's Europe, so that's a special sensibility. I would not be able to write about that unless I lived here for Long years. Time. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so we'll wait then, maybe. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> wait, yes. wait. Yes. Thank yes. you, thank you very much, Joyce Caldwood. It was a pleasure and an honor to have you here. Thank you. Thanks. France 24, your economy explained. Liberté, égalité, actualité.